in your like 25 years, what achievement do you have had? I do festivals in Australia, like 50,000, 70,000 people. So I've been in a few TV shows, American TV shows and Australian ones as well. Is it possible like young kids can graduate from the high school and jump to the construction industry and to become a successful? Very easy transition. It's having dedication, ambition and it's having the right attitude. Being in your position as a business owner, how much can we generate per year? 300,000. Which 300,000 sounds good. What do you learn from your uncle? To stand up for yourself and never be afraid of anybody and tell people how it is if they annoy you. How do you invest your money? In my family. Look after your family. The best investment. Misconception about like if females cannot be entrepreneur. What advice you would give to them? You need to have that mindset from day one. I can do it. I work seven days a week, even on holiday now. My laptop's with me. When I go back to the hotel, I'm still working. What is the best financial piece of advice you have ever received in your entire life? You use your money sensibly. You only buy what you can afford. You only live within your means. You don't go buy things that you don't need. Okay guys, welcome and welcome back to my channel again. Today I'm on the street again asking people what do you do for a living, asking some financial advice and personal development advice for you. Don't forget, today's video sponsor is you as always. Hit the like and subscribe button. Let's go to interview people. Uh, your name, age and where are you from? Aaron, 43, from Australia. What do you do for a living? I'm a musician and actor. How long are you in the industry? 25 years. Being in your like 25 years, what achievement do you have had? I do festivals in Australia. 50,000, 70,000 people touring Australia and I've been in a thing called Terminator No Fate. It's on YouTube, over 300,000 views. So I've been in a few TV shows, American TV shows and Australian ones as well. Being in your position, how much we can generate per year? Secret. <laughs> Can you give us a range? May I like give you some options you can choose? Is it like seven figures per year? Maybe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How do you invest your money? Uh, in my family. What do you mean? In what sense? Look after your family. It's the best investment. Like you are spending all your money for your family and then you have kids? Yes. For their education also? Education, for house, future. But any like uh, real assets you are putting your money on the side? Land. For people in their early 20s, they want to be successful in the music industry, mm -hmm. but they don't know where to start. What advice you give to them make art that you're proud of that's authentic to you and everything will be all right if you make something that you think everyone's gonna like it's not gonna turn out right but it'll be disposable if you make the stuff that you really want to make long term it'll be more successful and you'll be proud of it we have seen a lot of like musicians or singers they are becoming overnight successful people and they are becoming viral just with their maybe a couple of seconds shots and then they are growing their like a business emerging that at the same time they are splurging around their money they don't know how how to handle this situation because they are becoming overnight millionaire and then at the same time in one day they are becoming broke so what happens for them in your opinion they're buying stuff like clothes jewelry all that shit depreciates as soon as you as soon as you buy a car you leave the car lot it depreciates in value you buy jewelry it depreciates if you if you put all the diamonds and shit all over it it's not worth what you pay for it buy land buy apartment buy things that are going to be for your future don't buy things to impress people short term any best piece of financial advice you ever received in your entire life don't have a credit card only get a loan if you need an emergency a car that's going to help you make more money or a house nothing else needs a loan thank you very much for your great advice shout out your name also people will follow you on your youtube channel also will follow your music ah uh, it's just look up instagram losty underscore official great thank you very much good luck cool Hello, your name, age, and where are you from? I'm from Scotland. My name is Tony, and I'm 63. What do you do for a living? Um, I work as uh, an environmental inspector. Right, but how long you are in the job? Long time, 25 years. 25 years, such a long years. But why did you choose with that career? I chose it because it uh, impacts the environment. I mean, if you're doing something to help the environment, it makes a big difference. What made you like motivated for keeping in your career and continuing that for more than 20 years? I look at work as my hobby. Now, if you get up every morning and you're going to your hobby, it makes it easier than thinking you're going to Work. Being in your position, how much can we make per year? Up to 100 grand a year. And you are in the six figure range? Just about, yeah. How long it took you for shifting from five figures to six figures? Probably 20 years. Is it worth it for waiting for 20 years that you can maybe range up to the six figures? Of course it is, because it's graduation. You, you graduate up in the increments, and there's no point starting at the top. You need to build yourself up together. Besides your full time job, do you have any side business or you are investing your money for your? 
Absolutely. Maybe yeah. Absolutely. What business is it? Construction. So you are a developer? More so a remediator. When you go in and remediate things and upgrade them. Mm -hmm. yeah. In which country? Scotland. Okay. The same country you live and also do absolutely. your business. Yeah. I do, but yeah, absolutely. But what makes you a difference with your service that people choose you? Because uh, I'm client friendly. I give the client what he wants, mm -hmm. not what I think he wants. That's a big difference. What is the best financial piece of advice you have ever received in your entire life? The best financial advice I've ever had is make your money. You don't need to give it away. Can you break it down a little bit if people break do now? Break it down. Okay. All right, break it down. I'll break it down in as much as you use your money sensibly. Mm -hmm. You only buy what you can afford. You only live within your means. You don't go buy things that you don't need. That's nice. And any financial and development advice you would give to our community? You can do anything you want as long as you've got the ambition, mm -hmm. you've got the appetite for it. And every time you can knock down, get back up because that's the way to do it. That's the way you do business. Have you ever been broke before? Never. Never. Broke and as when I was a child and the, 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 I was brought up by 11 kids in the family. That was a family, 13 of us. Yes, we had hard times and I know what it's like to, to need. I know what it's like to want. But the thing is, it's a desire to go and get. And when you can go get, you do your own thing. If you go back to your 20s, what advice you would give to yourself or what would you do differently? I would be more content. Life's about not comparing. Life's about being happy with what you have. And if you don't compare with everybody else, you'll have a good, a decent, happy life. Thank you very much. Enjoy your day. Well, and so good luck on your business. Oh, lovely, yeah. thanks very much. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Hello, your name, age, and where are you from? Uh, my name's Gita. I'm from Berkshire in the UK, and I'm 45. What do you do for a living? I'm an independent advocate. What do you mean, like, independent advocate? I help those challenge their placements in the court protection. Right. It's one of our legislations that we have in the UK. Such a, like, a unique type of job opportunity, I would say? It is, yes. Mm. How did you start with that career? I started eight years ago. It's like adult social care, mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, I run my own business with it as well. What business do you have? It's it's called House of Advocacy and the local authorities come to us to have this advocacy work done for them. Is that a profitable career? Yes. And also business-wise? Yes. Being in your position, how much can we make per year? It depends if you're an independent advocate, anything, depending on your workload, between twenty to 70000 a year onwards. And you are in a six-figure range at the moment or not yet? Yes. How did you start from growing, let's say, from five figures for a year and then you ended up over six figures? It's a lot of promotion. So I send out promotional leaflets every sort of six weeks to about 300 different local authorities in the UK and I do that routinely and as I know there's a gap in the market eventually everyone starts approaching us for the work. People want to start in that business what should they do what should they follow or what should they know? They need to know the industry they need to know what the gaps are in the industry as well especially in adult social care in the UK there's different service providers that you have but they don't cover everything so it's knowing your market knowing the gaps in the industry and being that sort of unique company that's going to fill up that gap. So so how do you invest your money beside your business? In my business, yeah. Only your business? <laughs> I keep everything in the business for now, yes. And how do you scale up your business? Scale up in what sense? The like, uh, growing more and for example you are investing for marketing or whatever but how you it's are marketing, scaling up? marketing, also offering other services as well. What kind of services may I ask? It's again, it's adult social care, safeguarding assessments and things right. in care homes and hospitals. Any best piece of financial advice you ever received in your entire career or life? Watch the pennies and the pounds will look after themselves. Always make sure sure that when you know you are having that income coming in, look at it, keep it in the um, business and that's what I've done as well, kept it in the business just for the company to be financially strong. If you go all over again from starting zero, what would you do differently or what path you would follow? I wouldn't do anything differently because I knew the market so well and I worked for the local authority to know where the gaps are and everything and then when I sort of started up the business, it was just, I wouldn't do anything different. The way for, And that's why it's grown so nicely and steadily without any sort of downfalls touch wood <laughs> and at the end there are a lot of females in their early 20s they want to start a business but they are procrastinate not for starting or they are finding some reason excuse not for starting yeah. maybe also there are some misconception about like a female cannot be entrepreneur what advice you would give to them if you feel you can't do it it means that you're finding excuses already you need to have that mindset from day one I can do it I work seven days a week even on holiday now my laptops with me when I go back to the hotel Hotel, I'm still working so you don't take that break you put that hard work in for your first sort of four or five years and that's it from there it'd be smooth sailing but you have to put that work in it's not about going out partying I'm here on holiday with my family as I said my laptop's still in the hotel and when I go back today after dinner I'll be logged on catching up with the emails sending cross work and everything else until most probably midnight and most days I do work until midnight seven days a week is so it because it's hard yeah. work it's hard work it's definitely rewarding it is because you, it is your own business it's that's why you business. are yeah yes it's my own business business mm -hmm. and that's how it's grown because I know everything 
that's going on in the business as well. It's no point stepping back and letting someone else do that work for you. You need to know what's going on in your business. Amazing. Thank yeah. you very much. Good no luck problem. on your career and business. Oh, thank Enjoy you so it. much. Uh, your name, age, and where are you from? I'm Ria. I'm 18 and I'm from England. Likewise, man. I'm from England, but I'm 50, 52 this year. So what do you do for a living? I work at a gym as a receptionist. I work for Gillette, as you probably know, Gillette. Yeah, I shave, yeah, yeah. but as you can see my beards, I don't shave anyway, but after all that, you know, I'm a production line manager, so I've run the operation and stuff like that and so on. How long you were in the industry or the business? Yeah, I've been in the industry for 22 years. How did you start with that career? I used to work for IT, as the technology for IT. You know what, as redundancy came, COVID came and stuff like that, I had to take a career change. So we took a career change and then we moved across to where I am now as a production manager. Completely completely different industry from IT to the warehouse manager, you know, the operation and everything, the way it runs. But that's how I did a career change for COVID and so on. And then uh, for COVID, you know, we helped with, uh, in UK, my niece and I, we helped with cooking and stuff like that. I don't cook, but she cooks. You know, she helped with cake cooking and stuff. And she, that's what she'd like like to do in the for COVID because there's nothing else to do because mm -hmm. we're in gym. So you couldn't do much and stuff like that. So she thought, cake, why don't I do cake? And she moved into the cake and then started cooking cakes and stuff like that and then moved on from there, really. Mm -hmm. that, that was a hobby. The, the gym where you work, is it like a family business or...? Um, I know the owners, they were like all like family friends mm -hmm. and my mum and my dad work there. So yeah, that was a thing for me. All family involved yeah, to that gym, yeah, eh? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Is that a big gym? Um, it's a private health club, um, Eden Fitness um, in Ealing, so yeah. Wow. Yeah. Hey, I've heard about Eden. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's your uncle and yeah. what do you learn from your uncle? To stand up for yourself and mm. never be afraid of anybody and tell people how it is if they annoy you. It all comes from Muay Thai because we're doing Muay Thai. I've been in Muay Thai for 15 years and self-discipline. You know, I started when I was young, started teaching kids as well. But through COVID, I, I, we were doing like a, how do I say it? Teaching kids out the street and just like open the gym and just helping them with coat, like learning out, just training and stuff like that. But when COVID came, we had to stop because obviously I couldn't get those kids anymore and stuff like that and so on. But, you know, we're trying to bring that back up again and so on and build them up and bring kids out of the street and, you know, just focus on positive energy instead of negative. You know, you channel the negative energy into positivity. We're trying to bring that in the UK. For instead of choosing another industry, why did you go for gym and fitness industry even to start from the ground and you yeah. want to grow there? Do you know what it is? Um, my dad over there, he's drilled fitness into me from a young age. I've got my <laughs> uncle, they both fight some stuff growing up, a uh, fighter myself. And that's something I've always wanted to do and just like help people um, of any age. People in your age or early their, let's say, teenagers. Yeah. What advice you would give to them for starting a career or managing their money or maybe starting their business in the future? Yeah. Don't go crazy with spending. I know it's exciting when you get your first pay wage, but mm -hmm. don't go crazy. And do something that you're interested in. Don't do it just because your parents tell you to or like you know, you've got pressure from other people. Do it because you love it, because that's the only way you're going to make money and progress in the industry that you love. Great advice. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. How about you? Advice for younger kids, they are starting in the industry. Look, to be honest, I'm, I'm 52 this year, so nothing's possible. Everything is possible in life. It depends how you want to do it. Always think about positivity. Channel your negative energy into positivity. That's, that's how I do it, you know. I always say, it, make it positive, because everything's possible in life if you want to put your heart to it. Nothing you can't do in life, and you can do everything you want to do. In your industry, people want to start, what salary range it expects for them? You know, to be honest, kind of come to numbers is like 22, 23, everything's possible. And I'm not going to say you can go to 50 plus because you've got to start somewhere. You know, 22, 23, and then work your way up. You can go to 50 plus, man, it's easy. And so how do you invest your money? To be honest, the way I invest my money, I save. <laughs> Saving is investment or what? Saving is investment because then I spend wisely. I don't want to spend stuff like that in certain things. Like my wife, she just interviewed a few minutes ago, you know, she's a business owner and stuff like that. So she's, I invest with her, I invest with certain contracts, I invest with gym facilities and stuff like that because you're always going to make money in gym, right? You're never going to lose out. Invest your money wisely, you know, where you know you're going to make profit at the end of the day. That's what I think because I, I invest money in gym. As you touch about the mindset and what do you think you can achieve, people, there are a lot of people, they are lost and they don't have any commitments yet, but they want to start from somewhere else and maybe they are procrastinating. What advice would you give to them? The only advice I can give, right? When you feel lost, don't get that I can't do, you can do. No, you can do. It's the attitude you got to have. To be honest, I'm not saying 100% perfect. I like a drink and so on. Everyone does like drink. I'm not saying I, I go slack. I'm not saying I don't go slack. I do. But then you have to come back up. You can do attitude. That's the attitude you got to have. It's a can do attitude. Nowadays, industry is nowadays in, in gym wise, right? Everyone wants to be health perfect. You just got to make that effort and do it. Hardest bit is getting the result. But once you see that one result, 
That's it. That makes a change, man. Amazing. Thank you very much for stopping no, and you. giving us advice. Hello, your name, age, and where are you from? I'm from London. I'm 65, and my name is Peter. What do you do for a living? I've got a chauffeur company. So how long are you uh, in that industry? 40 years. Is that your own company? Yes. How did you start with your own company? Got fed up working for other people. Took a chance. In England, I've got the um, Mercedes Sprinter vans all kitted out, and I was the first company in the UK to do those vans as well. So I just took a chance. I've been doing it 42 years now. Just tried to do something a little bit different. Amazing. But what happens, you realise that it is enough for working for a corporate job or working for someone else. It is the right time to start your own company. I think you need a little bit of luck, some guts. Yeah, you, you, you just feel it. You've got to go with your feeling. If it does feel right and it doesn't work, at least you've tried. Have you ever been broke before? Ne- never broke out of money, but yeah, been low on money before. How did you overcome the situation? If your company's in trouble, if you can see light at the end of the tunnel, if you have to borrow, if you don't have... Sometimes I would have thought it's easier to fold if you don't think you're going to make it instead of getting into more debt. Don't try and chase your money. If it's just a temporary thing, like this year's been quiet for me the first four or five months of the year, but since May, June, I haven't stopped. You know, I've got vans out working while I'm on holiday. Yeah, so you give up and, and you need luck again. What makes your company a unique that people vehicles, don't do it? The vehicles, £160,000 each plus VAT. So not everyone wants to take that gamble. I've got lots of contacts because I've been doing it for so long. I do a lot of footballers that know me because I used to drive the coach mm-hmm. and I used to drive the England football team. So keeping with the players and they use me, recommend me. I do people at Chelsea, Manchester United, Liverpool. Yes, I've got clubs all over the place that use me. That's great. Being in your position as a business owner, how much can we generate per year? It's you can earn. It's unlimited. Yeah, you know, it could be half a million to three quarters of a million a year. It could be as low as three hundred thousand. Which three hundred thousand sounds good, but when you've got three vehicles to, to be paying insurance and London's not cheap, you need a minimum of around ten thousand pound a month. How did you make your first six-figure profit? The work just came in. It's I've got a lot of good hotels. They make money. Yeah, you know, they they probably make as much as I. People in their early career stage they want to shift from their nine to five job to start their own business what advice you would give to them it depends what they're in I, I can only talk about driving in Malta I don't think it's worth doing it's okay you've got a lot of established cut garages so you've got Melly mm-hmm. Uh, Williams Garage and everything else. It's same as England. You, what I think you've got to do to do it in Malta is find something that somebody else hasn't got. Same as London, because everybody was undercutting everybody and it doesn't work. So you've got to find a niche market. Like I did with the Sprinters. Uh, if you think, once you've got these Sprinters, you'll go to all the top hotels. Once people get to know about them and there's no other people can get hold of these vehicles or aren't prepared to spend that money. But um, yeah, you've got you just got to, to know your market really. Mm-hmm. And I've worked in Malta. You know, when it, with the vehicles, so and um, it might be different now, but when I was here, it, well, everyone was undercutting everybody, and uh, I wouldn't have liked to have been a business owner. Right. So, um, but that's it. I think everything changes in time. That's great. And you talked about uh, spending. How do you spend your money? I'm married. I've got a son. <laughs> Well, that's it, basically. You saw how many great people we met. Also, we asked a lot of questions from them just for you. Don't forget, today's video sponsor, as always, you. Comment below which answer you liked most. Also, hit the like and subscribe button. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.